Paul and Grady here with the No Filter Show. Grady, what do we got going on today? Well, we heard there's a new bed and breakfast in town. It's called America's Most Wanted. And supposedly it's Warren Jeff's master plan for his housing community turned into a bed and breakfast. Wow, let's go check it out. Let's do it. We are at the Warren Jeff's compound. As you can see, they've changed it into a bed and breakfast and it is super cool. It's large and there's buildings and there's a big fence. Hey. Oh, hey, how you doing? Morning. How are you guys? <laughs> yeah, we're at the No Filter Show. St. George News. I'm Paul. Robert Timpson. This is Grady. Robert. Nice to meet you guys. Pleasure to meet you. How much are the rooms? We start at 85 a night. Okay. And that is a, uh, that's a king or a queen room. Nice. Uh, nice furnishings. In fact, if you'd like, I'd love to give you a tour. This compound did not break ground until five years after Warren Jeffs was in jail. Wow. He's never been here. Nothing. It was built in 90 days, start to finish. Was it his ideas? Or? It was his idea, and the idea was that if they built it, he would be released from jail, and this is where he, one of the places he would come to. Robert, tell us about FLDS and Christmas trees. What's the deal? Christmas trees were thought to be pagan idols, but for me, it's, it's a sign of the holidays. It's a sign of Christmas. It's a sign of giving. It's a sign of family coming together, loving each other. Friends, family. I mean, friends serving friends. And this room here is designed to be a living room. Yeah. It's a lobby, but it is supposed to have a living room feel. This room is a, I like to call it the piano room. The piano room. The music room. Explain this. It looks like there's a lot of people that are moving back into their homes, and I think some of them lost their homes in, in the trust that was set up, and now they're coming back, and how's that working out? Well, I wouldn't say they lost them necessarily in the trust. Uh, they either were kicked out of town by Warren and Lyle, or they got disaffected and left and didn't feel like they were still welcome here as home. And that, that culture is changing. People are getting their homes back that they spent their lives building. Well, this here is the big suite that we're coming into. Correct. This room here has two queens. Slay like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And all the rooms here are equipped with uh, satellite, internet, uh, wow. microwave. All the amenities. All the amenities to come and, and feel comfortable. As you can see, the ceilings are high in here. I'm here with Jake Zitting. Now you actually live here. Yeah, I've been here for about two months. For two months. Is it a little eerie? It was at first, but you kind of get used to it and you kind of bring who you are, so. So you're basically the master of the house. Basically. Awesome. Jake, why is the internet always down? It's because we don't have InfoWest. You rang? Polygamy, what's the deal? Okay, so a few dates that are important to understand polygamy. Yes. In the 1830s, mm. the Mormon church started practicing polygamy. In 1852, after they'd moved to Utah, Brigham Young publicly announced that they were practicing polygamy. When did they issue the uniforms? <laughs> well, not exactly <laughs> sure how, how this came about. And in 1890, Wilford Woodruff, another president of the Mormon church, uh, issued a manifesto about 1904 when the next Mormon president, Joseph F. Smith, declared it with a second manifesto, uh, what, completely abolished. Abolished. They abolished it. Can yeah. I get in on it to this day? It, <laughs> is it possible? Is it a dream of yours? <laughs> yeah. 